I'm pleased to see everyone made it back from the workshops. Uh, did you enjoy the workshops? Yeah. Good, thank you. Um, right, well, well, we'll crack on with uh, the next session and we have our last personal perspective uh, from Rachel, our esteemed secretary. So would you like to uh, come up and speak? Hello, can everybody hear me? Yeah. <coughs> this is me and my life with BBS. So I'm Rachel, I'm 38 from Stockport. I went to mainstream nursery, primary, primary and infant and secondary school. It wasn't till about the age of 15 that I started to struggle with night blindness. I started falling over things, for instance, my mum and dad would put a coffee table out and I'd floor it. Um, <laughs> they'd put a pair of slippers out and I'd fall over it. They thought I was being a clumsy teenager at the age of 15 um, but then I went to the optician and the optician said I had astigmatism. They then sent me to Stepping Hill and Stepping Hill told me I had retinitis pigmentosa. There was no cure and I was going to go blind. At the age of 16, it was a bit of a shock, not sure what to do, as I was wanting to go and travel the world and do international tourism. This is something I decided wasn't for me then with my sight. So I decided to go to college I did leisure and tourism a year's intermediate and I obtained student of the year and got a distinction. I then went on and did the two year advanced course and got a distinction as well. Whilst studying at college, I worked at Summerfield supermarket on a delicatessen counter, checkout and kiosk and other jobs as well. I had a good social life with friends and the only problems I seemed to have was my night blindness. Everything else was good. Um, I then went on from Summerfield to work in a going place as travel agent. I did it for a year, glammed up in a lovely blue check uniform, <laughs> lovely blue, lovely blue um, coat, blazer and lovely navy blue court shoes and a lovely navy blue bobble, smiling every day saying, come on, you know you want to book a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> um, after a year of doing that, I decided it wasn't for me. Too much smiling, too much sitting down, too much saying, do you want to book the holiday or not? Come on, give me your money. <laughs> um, so I decided it wasn't for me. And in 2001, I actually went on Stockport Council's Bureau. Um, luckily, I was living at home with mum and dad and I didn't work for a bit. And then I went on the Bureau. Um, at the Bureau, I started in the sports letting team, worked with all the lads doing football. And I do love football, so that was good worked in human resources, drug action team, and in July 2002, I got a permanent position as a clerical assistant. It was brilliant. It was a new unit in the community safety team, helping um, promote, uh, raise awareness of crime disorder, antisocial behavior, and domestic violence. It was brill. My sight was okay, it was stable, and as I say, the only problems I had was night blindness. In 2004, I met my previous partner, and life was good. I then got different jobs within the community safety unit as a community safety officer, and in 2007, I got a great job as a domestic abuse coordinator, helping survivors of domestic abuse, supporting them through court, raising awareness, conferences, and working in the police station. I met a lot of people going through lots of circumstances. It was a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant position to be in. Unfortunately, in 2008, someone in my life passed away that was very, very dear, and that was my nan. She had a brain tumour, um, which was diagnosed in the February, and unfortunately, in 2008, on the 28th of October, she passed away. She was a massive person in our life, and she was very determined, and she had the gift of the gab, so I think that's where I've got it from. <laughs> um, in 2009, I carried on living life, working at the domestic abuse unit, and I lived with my partner in our own home. In 2010, I was diagnosed as severely, severely sight impaired. My sight had changed, but it was still okay as the only problems I seemed to have was the night blindness. I was able to go out and about with friends, family, and everything else. It didn't really stop me doing anything. In 2011, after several times of what I thought was fainting and passing out, actually turned out to be epilepsy. Four seizures later, cuts to my face, neck and other areas, I was diagnosed with epilepsy. 
I was given medication and it seemed to help stabilize it. Also in 2011, I got married and everything was good. In 2012, after genetic testing, I was diagnosed with BBS1. Yet again, it was, well, what does that mean? What is BBS? I didn't have a clue, but when Georgina Hall from Manchester Eye Hospital explained everything, things really did click into place. The obesity, tick. Polycystic ovary syndrome, tick. Wide feet, tick. Extra teeth within my mouth and other things as well. They all just clicked into place. Life was going good until the end of 2012, where the community safety unit decided to get rid of all their specialisms. They wanted us all to have generic roles. January 2013 was, the, was one of the worst years of my life as we <coughs> restructured in the unit and I didn't get the job I wanted. When I went for the position, they gave me the test in a size 11 font. As you can imagine, not being able to see, I had a panic attack, a meltdown, and the interview just went, all I can say is very wrong. I didn't get that position, but I interviewed for another one and I got it. It was just a generic community safety support officer. In the 2013, unfortunately, my marriage didn't work and we went our separate ways. In the October 2013, I had the worst seizure of my life. I was at my mum and dad's and all I, can, all I know, because I didn't know anything about it, I don't remember what happened, is I was cradled in my dad's arms going blue. Three paramedics pinning me down and shouting at me. That's all I know, is I don't know anymore. But anyway, that's gone now, I've moved forward. In 2014, I came back to being Miss Foley. Mrs. Walker went out the window. <laughs> I got back to being the single girl in her own home, in her little terrace pad. I then thought I would try and find people of my own age who had a visual impairment. I couldn't find anybody in Stockport, so I looked further afield and I went to an RP fighting blindness patient information day in Birmingham where for my sins, and I might regret this now, but I met a famous Liam Dempsey, <laughs> who is sat in the audience, um, a lady called Ruth Wormsley, who set up Manchester Blind Football Club, and also another gentleman. I exchanged numbers with Ruth, and all I can say is it's changed me forever. <clears throat> At the end of 2014, I went to my first Manchester Blind Football Club event. I met lots of friends, exchanged numbers. In 2015, I got more involved with Greater Manchester VIBs, which is a sport and social club. The club paid for me to go and deliver and take part in a level one tennis coaching course. I was the only blind person on the course. There was 10 of us. Yes, I was like the alien that had landed in the room. When they pair you up, <laughs> when they pair you up and nobody wants to be paired at you, everyone else gets paired up first and you think, hello, I'm here. <laughs> Um, eventually, um, I got paired up with a young lad. He was 19. He actually had a brother that had autism. And from me being on the course, it actually raised awareness. And he now actually plays sound tennis with his brother. Um, I actually I qualified as a level one tennis coaching course in July 2015. I then went on to help assist and play sound tennis. I also set up and helped goalball um, within the Manchester area and also help play and facilitate in the blind football sessions. In 2015, I attended my first clinic in Birmingham, as before that I never knew BBS existed. At my first clinic, I met two people who are now lifelong friends and I see them all the time and we socialise a lot. I then went on and went on my first travelise holiday without any family or friends to Lanzarote. I went on my first activity holiday with Galloways for the Blind, where I actually got to try windsurfing, kayak canoeing, high tree climbing, and actually jumping off a 60 foot tree and abseiling back down. All I can say is scary. <laughs> In 2016, the unit that I was working in, community safety unit, was, was going to be disbanded. 
I was thinking, what was I going to do? So they sent me to occupational health. Occupational health showed me the job description and it, there was nothing on there for me to do. So I was deemed as on the redeployment list. I went off for Christmas in 2016 and in January 2017, they were telling me that I could be on the redeployment list for more than two years. I was going into work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, just doing what I wanted and what I liked. Everybody around me was stressed out of their heads doing three jobs. And I was there doing what I wanted, going on YouTube, Facebook, and helping research charities. In the meantime, I started and became an observer with BBS UK. And I started um, doing volunteering work with the Royal National Institute for the Blind. In, in January 2017, it was deemed that I should go down the route of ill health. Three months later, after battles, meetings, meetings with managers, trade unions, you name it, at the end of April, I got the answer I wanted, and it was that I was able to leave on ill health grounds. So at the age of 36, I became a pensioner. <laughs> <laughs> And that was 20 July 2017. On the 21st of July 2017, I finished work. 16 years working in the community safety unit. I did think, what do I do now? I'm only 36, and part of my contract is I can only do volunteering work. So I put myself into things. I decided that I would do more work with the RNIB, so I became a member of the Northwest Network Committee. I am now a committee member and also the vice chair of this group. I then decided I would get more involved with BBS UK and became a trustee. And as of today, I've become the secretary. <clears throat> in 2017, in the August, I went away with three of my best friends who also have BBS one. The three of us went away to Mallorca. We didn't have any sighted friends or family. We scared our parents to death. <laughs> um, and when we got to Mallorca, it was like the minions had come out from nowhere. <laughs> we had all the support we needed and we were treated like kings and queens. There was only one funny moment on it when we heard a couple talking about us, saying, oh, there's two of them, there's two of them with the white canes. Oh, no, there's not. There's four of them with the white canes. <laughs> so, yeah, we had an amazing holiday. And then 2018, um, I got a new part. I had a new partner in my life, um, Richard Zimbler, as you know, the, the chairman that's uh, just resigned. We went off to Australia on our own in July 2018. Um, we went to visit Richard's dad in Australia and we traveled on our own. We had assistance from the airport staff, which was brilliant. We got to hold a koala, we got to feed kangaroos, we got to go to Sydney on a road trip, go to the opera house, listen to a show and go to the zoo. It was an amazing month. We also celebrated Christmas in July as Australia celebrates their winter in July. In 2018 also, I got more involved with Greater Manchester VIBs, going on activities, days out, theatre trips, gigs, you name it, I did it. I also went to Egypt with my three best friends who I went to Mallorca with, and we had an amazing time. We had the best times of our life and we were treated like kings and queens. For me, what I would say for anybody new, diagnosed with BBS or family members of people with BBS, just because you have been given BBS doesn't mean your life's over. My life has actually changed and gone immensely. And I actually am now busier than I ever was working. I do more, more volunteering. I love life to the full. And one thing I would say is, it is not your disability that you have, it's the ability you have to do it. With the ability you have, you can do anything you want in life. You may have to persevere, you may have to do it in a different way, and it may take you a lot longer, but I prove you, myself and other people out in the BBS world, you can do it. 
you just have to put your mind to it and persevere and be determined. And once I put my mind to something, as people know, people who will know me in the audience, I don't let it lie and I, I make sure I do it. Um, one last thing I'd like to say is two people in the audience, without them, I wouldn't be able to do what I've done. So thanks very much, mum and dad. Without you, I wouldn't be able to be the person I am today. Um, so thanks everybody for listening. Any questions? Want to ask? I can't believe how lazy you are. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing absolutely amazing it's a lesson inspirational, inspirational sure, lesson for all of us uh, definitely are you the reason why Richard has uh, resigned no don't blame me oh no 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 not my fault not guilty <laughs> did you want to take any questions yeah if anybody wants to ask any questions feel free I'm here all weekend or you can ask them now maybe over beer why do you regret meeting that Famous Liam in the I, I can't tell you. I'll tell you over a beer in the bar. Well done. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. much. Yes, sir.